So it's almost Christmas and instead of showing my, all my favourite Christmas movies like I did at Halloween with all my favourite Halloween movies, uh, I've decided just to tell you about one movie uh, that matters to me because we do love our Home Alones or Die Hards or A Christmas Carols but the one movie for me um, at Christmas, the perfect Christmas movie is It's A Wonderful Life. Uh, now this movie, I've watched this movie every year since I was a kid, like I do with Halloween, at Halloween. Um, I watch this every single year and it's a good, quite a good story uh, for me to tell you guys about the coloured version and the black and white version because every year I watch the black and white version. I didn't like black and white movies as a kid because I just wanted to see colourful explosions and action when I was a kid but the only movie, well there was a few but this is one of them, one of the only movies I watched in black and white that I actually loved. Um, and I remember my auntie, she had the coloured version on VHS, I think she recorded it or she got it somewhere and it was hard to come by as a kid because all we had was VHS uh, and it was never on TV, the only one that was on TV was the black and white version so I never ever got to see the coloured version as a child and then this came along, um, the coloured version on Blu-ray it was available on DVD and it was available for download etc but I decided not to watch it because all the memories that I had for the black and white one um, are all good memories and the black and white version does remind me of Christmas but I thought because it is my favourite Christmas movie I would give it a bash and see how it got on and I was actually quite surprised uh, I was pleasantly surprised and it actually made the movie seem like a different movie it wasn't any better than the black and white one in fact I still like the black and white version more but I think the colour adds a little something different something you haven't seen before and if you haven't seen the coloured version and love the black and white version I do recommend watching it, it's actually pretty good Obviously it's the same movie so you're going to love it anyway but the coloured version actually is pretty good and the, there was, I think there was two coloured versions, the first, in fact I think there was quite a few, the first couple of coloured versions of this movie were artificial colours that just didn't really go, uh, I don't know the term for it all, if it was technical or whatever but this is the version that's the best version in colour and it is quite hard to tell that it wasn't a coloured movie if you know what I mean. Um, Again, it was a really good watching it in colour. But anyway, that's, that's a little story between the black and white and the coloured version. I do love both versions, but I've seen the coloured version a couple of times now, but I do go back to the black and white one all the time because the black and white one is just stays true to me because I absolutely love it so much. Now, for those of you who have not seen It's a Wonderful Life, uh, it's a film directed by Frank Capra in 1946, and it's about a, a, a man who's struggling with life. His name's George Bailey, and it was Jimmy Stewart that plays George Bailey in this movie. He plays him as a youngster and an adult, which I found pretty weird, but still very well done. Uh, basically, it's about a guy who's got everything, and he's at a loose end. He's losing his money in his business, and things just aren't going very well for him. And it's Christmas time as well, and he's thinking, enough's enough, I'm finished with life. But there's more to life than what he's feeling at that moment in time. So Clarence, an angel who still doesn't have his wings, is sent down to show George Bailey what life would be like without him. Not just without him if he died, but what life would be like if he never existed. There is a lot of movies out there that have copied this, like Family Man starring Nicolas Cage and other TV shows that have taken episodes or done episodes at Christmas time, kind of reminiscent of It's a Wonderful Life because the story of this is so rich and strong that it's been carried on to other movies and other TV shows. Now hearing about this movie, without watching it, if you've never seen it before, it does sound like a really bad drama or it sounds like a movie you just wouldn't want to watch at Christmas time but it does have a great payoff. Everything that happens in this movie at the beginning is very important to watch and pay attention to because the, when life is there without George he gets to see the good times that people have when he doesn't exist and they don't care, they don't know he exists but he does get to see things that happen in his family that take a turn for the worst because George isn't there. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for those of you who haven't seen it, but things happen with his little brother and his parents and things like that. Um, as a consequence of him not being there, as a consequence of him never existing. Now Jimmy Stewart's performance in this was actually outstanding. Um, his acting in the 1940s is almost equivalent to some of the acting these days. Because you do watch movies from the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s and you can see that it's more Broadway style acting and kind of um, like a like a theatre performance and that's what it was back then which was fine for the times but watching movies back then or watching movies now that are set back then or filmed back then 
You can see that they're dated and the acting style is way out of date, but in this movie, it's not, and it's strange because there's movies set around, or filmed around this era, and after that's very, very badly dated, but this movie's not dated at all. Jimmy Stewart's performance in this was up there with acting performances these days. Um, I have to give a shout out to Donna Reed as well. She played the wife um, of George Bailey in this as well. Uh, she was absolutely stunning in this film, and again, she looked like a, someone from 2017. She was absolutely beautiful. Um, you do look at people back then and think the hairstyle, the, the makeup that they wear, is all very dated, but not Donna Reed. Everything she wore, everything she looked like, she was absolutely beautiful. And her performance in this was fantastic as well. She, and I'm not afraid, uh, ashamed to admit this, but she made me cry a few times in this film because she was amazing in this film. And then watching this film in colour, I think the most enjoyment I had, or one of the most enjoyments I have, for watching it in colour is seeing Donna Reed in colour as well because I've never seen her in anything in colour before. I never watched, I think it was Dallas or Dynasty she was in. I never watched anything with her in it before. This is the only movie that I've ever seen with her in it. And watching it in black and white for all these years and then seeing her in colour, it was a good surprise for me because she was even more beautiful in colour. There's some great memorable scenes in this movie and even if you haven't saw the film before, you see scenes in this film and you think, oh that's in a song or a, a movie. Uh, they've copied it. For example, the scene when uh, George is talking to her and they're uh, talking about the moon. He's like, do you want the moon, Mary? And they'll throw a lasso over it. That's in some songs. I think McFly sang it in a song. Um, so you, if you watch the movie for the first time, there's things that you'll notice in it that you didn't know they were in this movie. And obviously the most famous scene of all uh, is at the end of the movie when George's daughter says, every time a, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. And when you watch that part of the movie after watching the full two hours, when she says that, again the tears just come back again. Um, no matter how what mood you're in, no matter if you're a, a big muscly guy, you'll watch this and you'll have a tear in your eye every time. Now although the premise of the movie is about don't wish your life away, uh, it does seem a little bit glum for a Christmas movie, but overall uh, it's an enjoyable movie and uh, it has to be seen by the whole family at Christmas time. That's the best and probably the only time to watch this movie. To have that feeling, having the Christmas tree there, the Christmas decorations on and having the movie on in the background, even paying attention to it as well, uh, helps. This isn't going to be a movie where I rate at the very end because everybody knows and you'll know yourself, this is an A plus movie. This is one of the greatest movies of all time. Not just the greatest Christmas movie of all time, but one of the greatest movies in history. Uh, because it is absolutely amazing. It is in my top 10 movies of all time. It's a wonderful life. And it is. Anyway guys, that's probably the only Christmas movie that I'm going to discuss this month. Because uh, there's a lot more coming out. you get got Star Wars, you've got all this Infinity War news going on. So, It's a Wonderful Life is the only Christmas themed thing I'm going to talk about this year. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't seen it, it's a Wonderful Life, check it out before Christmas. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for subscribing. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.